Hello everyone, I'm Tara, the Dance Doctor. Welcome to my channel. In today's lesson, I'm sharing with you some extremely valuable dance drills to help you develop and improve your technique. Just so you know what to expect, I'm going through a series of exercises for our feet, legs, core, spine, and arms, but we are not dancing with music in this video. We're just going through, I'm explaining how to do each exercise properly, and then we're getting some repetitions in. I do encourage you to make these exercises part of your dance warm-up and do them to the music of your choosing. As always, there are timestamps in the description box below so you can easily find the section of the video you're looking for. Also in the description box, there's a link to my Patreon page. If you love my content and want to get early access to my video lessons, you can become a member by following the link. We're gonna get right into the lesson. I just wanna remind you to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the post notifications so you can see when I upload more stuff like this. Now let's get dancing. Okay, so the first exercise that we are going to do today is one for warming up the legs and feet, getting your body aligned, and helping you um, get your body balanced for when you do start dancing. So we're going to just um, bring the feet and the legs all the way together. And now from this position, we're going to try to eliminate all the spaces between our legs. So it's not really physically possible for most people to eliminate all the space between the legs, but the point is to try, because when I do that, I am engaging the muscles in the inner part of my leg and bringing everything in toward the center, bringing my ankles together and creating this nice tight center line, okay? From here, I'm gonna bring my belly button in toward my spine, lift my rib cage, open my chest and pull my scapula down. From here, I'm going to take eight counts to rise up into releve, which means I'm going up onto my toes. Now, when I say go up onto my toes, um, what, what dancers mean when they say that is we want to be balancing on the space between the ball of the foot and the big toe. So I'm going to take eight counts to get onto that point, trying to keep my legs pressing together, my ankles together, and maintaining that center line. So I'm going to go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come down slowly, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come down one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you from the side. So we're here, and I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down one. Two, three, four five, six, seven, and again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can feel free to also do that many more times. It's a really good exercise, like I said, to get you nice and centered and keeping the ankles together um, as we do that. Uh, the common tendency for people when they rise onto their toes, there's two common mistakes that people make that you wanna watch for. One is to allow the ankles to roll out. So I end up kind of balanced over the outside of my foot, um, which is not conducive to helping us when we're turning or when we're standing on one foot. So we do wanna try to get our weight over the big toe. One way to make sure that we're doing that is to try and keep the ankles together as I go up and down. Another common mistake that people make when they're rising up onto their toes is they pitch their weight forward, which as you can see, does not allow me to maintain my balance. So what I'm really trying to do is go straight up from where I was and come straight down without changing the angle of my spine, 
okay? So we're gonna do one more exercise using releve just to get our legs and our feet nice and warmed up. This is a forced arch exercise. When dance teachers say forced arch, what they're referring to is when we go up onto releve all the way and then bend our knees to increase the arch in our foot. Okay, so this is really good for warming up your feet. It's also a really good one if you're trying to increase the flexibility in your feet, and it's also really good for that. So, we're gonna take the eight counts to get all the way up onto that point between the big toe and the ball of the foot, and I'm going to bend and straighten two, three, four, five, keeping the ankles together, six, trying to keep the heels high, seven, eight, all the way up, hold, and come down. And I'll do that one again facing front, so you can see that we're really trying to keep the ankles together for the entire exercise. So we go up in a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We go one, up, bend, come up, keeping the spine straight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and lift, 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 and gently lower back down. Okay, so the second exercise that we're going to do is another one to warm up the feet and the ankles and to help us um, continue to build flexibility in those areas. So what we're going to do is just simply point our foot out in front, and from here we're going to go heel, toe, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and switch, we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and other side again, we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to point the foot out in front, lift it off the ground, and roll the ankle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. And other direction again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And change one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other side. Point. Lift. And we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other side. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the third exercise that we're going to do today is really going to help you with making beautiful transitions in your dancing, okay? Transitions and lines, I should say. So we're going to start by brushing one foot forward. Then we're going to rotate out our leg from the hip socket. So we're gonna brush our foot forward and we go one, two. So what I'm doing here is rotating the entire leg. So as you can see, my leg is nice and straight, my foot is pointed, and I'm going to rotate my heel forward and come back into parallel. Okay, so we're gonna do that eight times. So we go brush forward and one, two, three, four, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do that on the other side. Brush forward and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to do the same thing going to the side. Brush out and one. Without moving any other part of the body. Five, six, seven, eight. And come in. Other side. One, two, three, four. Keep that leg nice and straight. Seven, eight. Going back. We go. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. As you can see, my range of motion isn't super large. The important thing is to just isolate the rotation in the hip socket and try not to move any other part of your body. So don't worry if you feel like you're not moving a lot. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are going to brush the leg forward, rotate, and then you're going to rotate it back in and bring the leg in, okay? So we're going brush forward, turn out to make a beautiful line with the leg, turn in and bend. And here, when I bend my knee and bring my feet together, which is one of the most common transitions that exists in all types of Latin dancing. What I want to do is think about maintaining this knee direction straight forward. So I don't want to turn my knee away from the front. But as I do that, I'm trying to gather my ankles. So as you can see, there's a space here between my feet. My toes are not coming together, my ankles are coming together. So sometimes what that feels like is kind of dropping the ankle toward the floor, but as you can see, my knee is still facing forward and this creates a beautiful line in the legs. From here, we're going to point behind, turn out, turn back in, and ankles together, forward. Turn out, turn in, gap, back, turn out, turn in, gap, forward, turn out, turn in, gather, back, turn out, turn in, gap. And let's do that on the other side. So we go forward, turn out, turn in, gather, back, turn out, turn in, gap, forward, turn out, Turn in, gather, back, turn out, turn in, gather again, forward, out, in, gather, back, out, in, gather. Now, we are going to practice a couple more things um, with this idea of the gathering and extending of the leg. The first one is, pointing forward, and I'm going to just bring the foot in. In this situation, I'm putting the emphasis on the gathering in. So I brush out and I go in, 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 trying to just isolate the foot coming from the knee and bringing the ankles together every time I gather. So I go in, 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 in. This is one of the most effective exercises if what you're trying to foster in your dancing is more speed and accuracy. These are really wonderful exercises for that purpose. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the side. So we're gonna go in, 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 five, six, seven, eight. And the same thing back. I go in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing on the other side. Foot forward and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And out to the side. 
in two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And back we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the final exercise that we're going to do for our feet and legs is a switching of our weight, a changing of weight, trying to maintain this nice line in the legs that we were working on in the previous exercise. So bringing the ankles together, in, the, in this exercise I'm going to have you just gently take your toes away from one another. Your big toes are slanting out just a little bit so that the ankles can be a little closer together. Doing that same thing that we did in the very first exercise, bringing the legs together, trying to eliminate all the space, which is going to naturally make you want to lift up here so that you're not putting so much stress on the legs. The more we lift up in our torso, the lighter our legs are going to be. So from here, I'm going to lift one of my heels, and again, making sure that I'm not turning this knee, keeping the knee facing forward, but keeping the ankles together. And then I'm going to press that heel down to the floor and switch and bring the other heel off the ground. Press, switch, press, switch, press, switch, press, switch, press, switch, press, switch. Press, switch. So the foot that I'm standing on is going to be straight, that leg is going to be straight, and the one with the heel coming up is going to bend. So I get this nice triangle between my legs. So I go press, switch, keeping the ankles together. Press, switch, press, switch, press, switch. I'm trying to get as much of my legs pressing together as possible. Switch, press, switch, okay? Now we're going to do the same thing, moving side to side. So we're going to go step to the side. When I do that, when I step to the side, I'm going to try and drop my ankle toward the floor. A very common mistake I see people make when they're dancing, when they step out to the side, is they allow, again, their ankle to roll out Words. And we really want the ankle always to be rolling inwards so I get this nice dancerly line with my leg. Now I'm going to bring that foot in and switch my weight. And I'll step, drop the ankle toward the floor, nice extended straight leg, nice pointed toes. Drag that foot in and switch. And step. Drop the ankle, bring it in, and switch. And let's switch, and we'll go to the other side. Step, drop that ankle, bring it in, switch. Step, drop, in, switch. Step, drop, in, switch. And switch, other side, step, drop. Bring it in, switch the weight. Out, drop the ankle, bring it in, switch. Out, drop, in, switch, and switch. Other side, step, drop, in, switch, step, drop, in, switch, step, drop, in, Switch. Okay, so now moving on to some exercises that we can do to warm up our core, our hips, and our rib cage. We're going to start with one um, that focuses on the hips. So I'm going to stand with two straight knees. The straight knee component of this is very important, and the reason is because a lot of times um, when we're doing different Latin dances, we become dependent on the knees to create our hip movement, which in a lot of cases is okay. But when we're trying to create a different type of hip movement and increase our flexibility and our knowledge in our body, it's important to be able to create hip movement 
from different areas, okay? So that's why we're doing this one now on completely straight knees. So what I want you to do is try to first just gently create a figure eight with your hips, thinking of the figure eight for this moment going in this direction only. So I'm going forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward, side, back. And what I want you to notice as you do this is where your weight goes on your feet as you make those changes in your hips. What should be happening is, as I go forward, I take my weight onto the ball of this foot without lifting the heel. I'm just talking about where your weight is over your foot. Then I go to the middle of the foot, and then I go onto the heel. Now, as I bring my hips over, I'm going to send my weight onto the ball of this foot now. Middle, heel. Ball, middle, heel. Ball, middle, heel. Ball, middle, heel, so that you are engaging many parts of your body to create this hip action. So now I'm going to have you increase the intensity a little bit by crunching, contracting your pelvis here and bringing it around and back. And now contract without bending the knees, just using the center to create that movement. Contract, side, back. Contract, side, back. Contract, side, back. Make sure that you're pulling up out of your legs, okay? Now, in addition to contracting, now I'm also going to think about making my figure eight in this direction so that my dancing i'm practicing making multi-dimensional movements with my body so i'm going forward and then i'm crunching side so i go forward side back forward side back and so now as you can see my figure eight is not only happening in this direction but it's also going this way. So we're really warming up our core. So I go forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward, lift, back, forward, lift, back, forward, lift, back, transferring the weight from the ball of the foot to the heel. And one, two, three, four, five, six, keeping both feet planted on the ground, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now we are going to do the same figure eight action, but with our feet together, again, using this action that we practice um, in the foot and leg section of this video. So I'm going to bend one knee and now instead of just changing my weight and focusing on the legs, when I change I'm going to crunch forward side back and forward side back. Forward side back, forward side back. And I'll do it from the side. One thing I want you to notice though before I do that is that when I go forward side, I'm not allowing this to happen again. A common thread throughout this video, no matter what we're doing, is that I'm never allowing my ankles to roll outward. So I go forward side, back, 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 ankles together, and one more time. Forward side, back, and crunch side, crunch up, forward up, forward up, forward up, and last one. 
Okay, so now moving into our rib cage. Again, we're gonna stand up here in second position. And I'm going to now create a figure eight with my rib cage. So I'm going diagonally forward, around, diagonally forward and around. Forward, around, forward, around. Forward, around, out and back. Out, around, back. Sometimes it helps to put the hands on the shoulders so that they don't get involved in what we're doing. Figure eight, and I'll show you from the side. I go out, around, back, 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 and out, out. Don't worry if you feel like your range of motion is small here. It's better to have a small range of motion and really isolate the part of the body that we're trying to move than it is to try and move big and end up not isolating. So, one more time. I go around, 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 diagonal, around, 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 around. And a lot of people will say to me when we're doing these exercises, but I'm moving my hips. If your hips move gently while you're doing this, that's okay. The important thing is that the hips don't initiate the movement, okay? Which is going to apply to this, the second exercise that we're gonna do, which is half circle forward, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. So we're really trying to get as much arch in the back as possible. Half circle, we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And half circle back, now we go one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'll do it again. Forward we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now that we've warmed up our rib cage and our hips separately. We are going to do our figure eight movements, both with our feet apart and together using both the rib cage and the hips. So the rib cage is going to initiate the movement going out and then the hip follows. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now with the feet together, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now the last thing that we're going to do for our midsection before we move on to the last section, which is our arms, is a full body movement um, to really warm up the entire spine and help us increase our flexibility and our fluidity in our dancing. So what we're going to do is we are going to arch our back, roll the shoulders back, and arch the back. That's the first part of this movement. So I roll and arch, go down. So as I go down, I'm actually increasing my arch as much as I can. Then I'm going to contract from the hips, contracting the rib cage, contracting the upper spine, bring the chin to the chest, and roll up. And I start
start again. Roll the shoulders back, rib cage forward, come down, contract, and come up. Roll, and contract, and roll, and contract, and roll, and contract. And I am keeping my ankles together as I do that, so I go here, and contract, and here, and contract. Now, we're going to do the same thing with our feet in different positions. So first, just bringing your foot into the position that we've been using, this one. So I'm here, and I'm going to go here, and roll up. So I'm practicing maintaining the line in the legs as I challenge my balance, okay? Other side, we go. Roll the shoulders back, contract, and roll, contract, and roll, contract, last one, roll, contract. Okay, now with our foot pointed out in front, we're going to go roll, contract, roll, contract, roll, contract, roll, contract. And other side, point your foot out in front. So as you can see, my knees are flexing and straightening, that's okay, but throughout, I keep my foot nice and pointed. So I go, roll, contract, roll, contract, roll, contract, and roll, contract. And you can kind of play with this. You can point out to the side, you can point back, you can have your feet apart, you can be here. Use that as a nice versatile warm up for your entire body, but also thinking about making sure that you're always creating nice lines in the legs, regardless of what's happening in the spine. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to focus on today in this series of exercises or drills for dancers are the arms. So I'm going to start with a very simple exercise that's great for warming up the arms, the shoulders, and the back, and getting us used to the dynamic that we want to be using when we are um, doing adornments in our arms. So we're going to start by just uh, put your hands forward like you're going to give somebody a high five and then you're going to push down with the heel of the hand and then extend the fingers at the last moment. So I go push, extend, push, extend, push, four, five, six, seven, Eight, and now we're going to do the same thing on the low diagonal. One, two, keeping the chest nice and open, scapula coming down the back. Five, six, seven, eight, and out one. So now my fingers are pointing toward one another, and I'm pushing out. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. On a high diagonal. One, two, three, four, five. Keeping the shoulders down. Seven, eight, and all the way up. So now I'm like I'm holding a tray. On my hands, I'm pushing up with the heel of the hand, keeping the shoulders pulled down the back. So I'll do this one from the back so you can see. I'm pulling my scapula down, which then opens up my chest. Hands to the ceiling. I go 
push up, extend, up, extend, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now going back, high diagonal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Straight out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Low diagonal, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and going straight down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do today with the arms is we're going to practice extending and holding our arm out as I pull my scapula back. This is a very useful and important skill to have to be able to isolate the shoulder blade without affecting the angle of the arm because it does create a beautiful dynamic in the body when you are able to do that. So that's why um, dancers use this exercise a lot because it brings a lot to your dancing. So we're gonna just stand with our feet in second position again. I'm going to use this same technique that we used in the first exercise, pointing the fingers inward. I'm going to push out to the side and I'm going to reach out as far as I can. So you can see I'm extending away from my body as far as I can. And from here, I'm going to pull the shoulder blade back without changing the angle of my arm. So my arm is still reaching, but I'm pulling back with the shoulder blade. So I go, pull, two, three, four. And other side, fingers in, push out, and extend away from the body, and pull, two, three, Four. Now we're going to try and do it fluidly. So I'm going to push out, pull, and come in. Now I'm going to push out, pull, bring it in. The other arm goes out. Pull, come in. Push out, 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 pull, come in. Out, pull. Out, pull. Out, pull. And out, pull. Thanks so much for joining me for today's lesson. Leave a comment below and let me know how you did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications for my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram at DanceDoctorOnline. Until next time, keep dancing.